Hey, this is Larry Slagle with another political profile on Maslin Magazine. I'm here today with Lorraine Wilburn, who's running for the State House for the 48th District in Ohio. Isn't that not correct? That's correct. How are you doing, Lorraine? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. What possessed you to run for political office? Well, <laughs> that's a bit of a story. Um, I actually started the day after the uh, 2016 election. Um, I started a, an activist group, a direct action activist group. I was feeling pretty despondent about the 2016 election and felt like I really needed to do something. Um, that I, What I had done previously, I'd worked on campaigns, I've always done volunteer work, um, I've worked in public advocacy my entire life. Um, but the results of that election made me realize that I hadn't done enough and mm -hmm. it was time for me to take action. So I started a group called Action Together Stark and our first meeting was a little dinner meeting with uh, several moms basically and a few of them from my kids school. And um, we, we kind of commiserated and it was sort of a group therapy moment. And, but by the end of the meeting, we decided that we really all wanted to have an impact. We didn't want to just sit and have coffee and, and have dinner with each other. And, 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 you know, the forming the community was important, but we needed to take action. So then moving forward, I reserved a, a library room and thought, well, we'll see how this goes. And um, that first meeting, 75 people showed up. And then our second meeting, 150 people showed up. And then our third meeting, over 200 people showed up. Um, so we just grew exponentially very quickly. We'll talk about life experiences then. What do you bring to the table that will make you a good state representative? Well, um, I, as I said, I've been an advocate my entire life. I have worked in public health um, for the federal government and a few um, private agencies. I have worked in domestic violence shelters, um, doing volunteer work and casework. And um, most of my professional work after college has been actually international work where we were improving the lives of women through vaccine research, HIV AIDS vaccine research. And then later I did microfinance work um, where we were providing microfinance loans to women in developing countries and, and radically changing their lives. What do you look to as the issues facing the electorate in the 48th Health District as to which you would want to emphasize in your campaign coming up for the next what, three and a half, four months? Mm -hmm. um, healthcare is a really big issue for me, and I know it's a big issue for a lot of Ohioans. Um, it's one of the issues I'm campaigning on. Uh, I have a daughter who has been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, and so, um, you know, our concern is uh, losing our pre-existing condition protections, losing our access to health care in general is a real concern. Um, she's only nine years old, and so being ineligible for health care until she's 65 is just unconscionable. Um, which is where we're, we're, you know, we're finding ourselves now. I think we're we're heading heading that way. Um, <clears throat> so healthcare, also access, affordability. So many Ohioans are uh, really struggling to make ends meet and and meeting those healthcare costs. Um, in particular, I had a, uh, I was canvassing recently and I spoke to a gentleman who worked uh, 30 years at Republic Steel, retired. Um, he has a, a good retirement, a decent retirement, he said, and his Social Security. Um, however, his health care, his health insurance has um, quadrupled in costs over the last several years. And um, he's, though he owns his home outright, he is finding um, he may have to make a decision to sell his home in order to meet his health care costs as he's getting older. And uh, that's a real concern, obviously. We, you know, people, people work for 30 years and have the dignity, should have the dignity of a, a, a retirement where they don't have to worry about health care costs and they can... As the legislature in the Ohio State House, how, does, how would you um, impact on those problems? Um, I think there's a lot we can do. Obviously, on the federal level, we're losing a lot of our protections. We're losing a lot of health care protections. Um, but there's a big impact that we can have on the state level. Now, you know, pie in the sky would be Medicare for all. Um, that is something that I think that is worth considering um, and as a long-range goal. Um, in the interim, though, there are so many measures that we can take to ensure that people are covered. We need to protect our Medicaid expansion, I think, at all costs in Ohio. We have, um, you know... Mm -hmm hundreds of thousands of Ohioans are on, are on the Medicaid expansion. And so we have to ensure that they stay there, that we keep, you know, we don't let those people fall through the cracks and that they, they continue to um, have their insurance. Um, we can, there are a lot of measures that we can take to uh, reduce the costs of uh, pharmaceuticals in the state. Um, so I think there, I, I actually think that we can have a much bigger impact on this issue on the state level. 
um, because, you know, as we say, federal protections aren't, can't be relied upon and they can be changed at the whim of an administration. So. Have you had the opportunity to have any type of one-on-one -on -one, uh, forums with your opponent? Not yet. No? Mm -hmm. Are you looking forward to those? Yes. What would you yeah. hope would be discussed in those types of forums? Um, mainly, you know, how his policies and, and his voting record, the things that he's chosen to champion in the state house have impacted working families. I'm not, um, you know, Scott is a nice guy. Um, he is well respected and liked in the community. Um, you know, he's he's definitely not one of the the big bad wolves in the state house. Um, however, there have been some decisions that have had negative impacts on working families. Um, you know, raising sales tax is not the solution, and that hurts working families more than the the upper echelon of you know earners in the state. And this is something that he you know has voted for and supported. Um, and you know, I think that we need to take a closer look at his record. I don't, I'm not so sure that everyone is paying very close attention at the state level at decisions that are being made. And while he's a very nice person and um, I, you know, I no ill words for him, there may have been some decisions that people don't realize are um, you know, impacting their daily lives, education being one of them. Um, and how, would, how would you as a state legislator um, impact the, the educational system in the state of Ohio? Well, first of all, we need to fix the funding so that it's equitable. Um, and you know, how would that be? Well, it was deemed unconstitutional, you know, 15 years ago, and it hasn't been fixed or addressed by the state house. Uh, uh, right now, we have a system that relies on public wealth. So, depending on which zip code you live in, whether or not you live in an affluent zip code, um, it determines the quality of your education, the quality of the facilities that you're educated in. Um, and so, uh, you know, one solution is. Uh, to remove that that uh, particular system um, and not fund our schools uh, through property taxes, but through other means and sort of spread the costs across the state rather than having these silos um, that pay for education. Also, charter schools have a huge impact on our public school systems. Um, they've been our schools have been funneling the, the the money follows the students. So schools have been state or the public schools have been funneling money into the charter schools. Um, the the Money follows the student, and our public schools suffer. And we pay, you know, we, we talk a lot about how our public schools have failed, and that when you look at it on paper and objectively, um, how much money we've taken from the public schools, the, the public schools aren't failing us. We are failing our public schools. We're not funding them at, in an adequate way and ensuring that every child has the resources and every teacher has the resources they need mm -hmm. at every, you know, in every school district, not just Jackson Township. Or, you know, I'm in North Canton. I have very good schools in North Canton. However, there are other school districts that are suffering. And, um, I, you know, I'd like to see those other schools uh, do better. I, I, my mom used to, used to tell me <laughs> um, that every child has the potential to radically change the world. And some of these schools that aren't being funded, we might have a student in that, in that school that is going to cure some form of cancer that has been uncurable up until this point. But if we don't give them the opportunity, we'll never appreciate you know the the benefit of that child's uh, genius and so when I you know when I think about school funding that's that's to me is in all of our best interests to make sure all students are covered and all students get what they need and where do you reside in the 48th district I live in North Canton and you've not held political office before I've never held political office so this before. must be somewhat more difficult than you made a thought in some ways and probably easier than you thought in others <laughs> It's been a real learning experience. Um, it's been exciting and terrifying and wonderful and exhausting and exhilarating and awful all at once. <laughs> that probably sums it all up. Yes. Um, educational background. Um, well, I'm the first member of my family to attend college. I've come from a working class family. Uh, I put myself through college with a combination of student loans and bartending. I bartended for a number of years, actually, before I um, went back to college and, and finished school. Uh, studied sociology and philosophy. Um, I always wanted to save the world, and then um, when I was done school, I realized that a liberal arts degree is not necessarily the best way to go about that, um, but I think that, you know, it is what you make of it, and I have a lot of passion for improving the lives of, of people in general. Um, mm -hmm. I have benefited from poverty programs growing up. Um, I've worked in a working class union family. Um, I, you know, I'm a real person bringing real concerns with me to the state house, and I think it's time we have that type of representation. And you have one child or more? I have two children. Two children. I have a son and a daughter. Okay, and you're currently employed? Um, I'm actually not employed. Oh, so you didn't spend all your time <laughs> Yes, I, yeah, um, soon after I was, uh, you know, finally made the final decision to run for office, um, 
work and running for office was really a difficult balance with my family and, right. and everything. So um, we kind of made the decision that it was... You're just not paid for the work you're doing Absolutely. I'm working probably harder now than I ever have in my entire life and not being paid for any of it. <laughs> Why should people in the 48th vote for you? Um, I bring something completely new. I bring a brand new perspective. I think we have had, um, you know, over 30 years of Scott Olsager in office, and and you know, he, for better or for worse, he's done a fine job in some areas, and I and I think improvements are, are needed in others. Um, but I think if if nothing else, right now, this time in our, you know in our in 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 our history, it's time for a new perspective. It's time. For us to look for new novel ways to solve big problems. I think having the same people in office for decades um, while they become very good at their job, um, it doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, foster innovation and new ideas. You kind of get stuck in the status quo. And, you know, also, uh, Ohio passed term limits in this, and the people spoke. They wanted term limits in this state. And, um, my opponent has kind of snubbed his nose at those term limits and ha has worked the system uh, by swapping seats for decades. So you must have an active campaign. Mm -hmm, I do. You have a website? I do. And what would that be? I am at LorraineForOhio.com. And if someone wanted to contact you, how would they contact you to either get more information about you or perhaps assist in your campaigning? Um, you can you can actually reach me through my website. Um, there's a message, there's a contact uh, form on there, and you can also find me on Facebook. I'm also Lorraine for Ohio on Facebook, um, and you can message through the Facebook page and or comment comment you know get in touch with us that way. What type of campaign are you running? A very very grassroots campaign. And that means that means I have an army of volunteers. Um, I have a great deal of help, and it really is a people-powered campaign. I have over 300 contributions, through individual contributions. I don't have any big corporate donors or PACs funding this campaign. Um, the my average campaign uh, is, or my, my average contribution is about $23. Um, so, <laughs> and I have, uh, you know, we, we have canvassing events and things like that, and we have, you know, dozens of volunteers show up ready to work, and they really want to see change. What do you mean by canvassing? A lot of people won't know what that means. Um, canvassing is going door to door and talking directly to voters, and it really is the best way um, to, to reach your voters. I think at this day and age, especially, we don't talk to each other, mm -hmm. and I have found these conversations to be, um, first of all, very, very important. Um, I've I've heard perspectives that I didn't consider, and I've also, I think, changed a few hearts and minds. But I think uh, that we need more of this. We need less of the fighting on Facebook and more of the meeting one-on-one. -on -one. Any upcoming events that people can come and meet you at? Yes, absolutely. We're actually canvassing again this Saturday. We'll be at Stark County Democratic Headquarters at 10 a.m. So if you're interested in coming out and, and learning how to canvass, if you've never done it, it's Where actually pretty be? nice. Uh, Democratic Headquarters, yes. it's <laughs> the exact address. It's on Easton Street, but I don't know the exact address. Yeah, Oakwood Square. Okay. Um, and Oakwood... Oakwood Square. Uh, we canvass usually about two or three hours. Um, we have a great time doing it. And uh, we are, we're actually doing that every Saturday and Sunday until Election Day. All right. So anything else you'd like to speak forward to the voters before you leave me today? <laughs> well, um, just to say that, you know, one of the reasons that I'm running for office is because the one of the things that um, always goes through my mind when someone asks me that question is because um, I love our country, I love this country, and I believe that patriotism is the commitment we make to upholding the values um, of, of taking care of, all, of each other and um, the, the values that our forefathers and the ideals that our forefathers put forward. We, we, we haven't realized them um, to their best potential yet, and I see so much potential in all of us to reach, you know, reach sort of the pinnacle of our values and ideals, and um, for me, running for office is an act of patriotism. Yeah, good. Well, I've been here talking with Lorraine Wilburn, who's the Democratic candidate for the 48th District House seat in the state of Ohio. Thank you for coming in, Lorraine. It's nice meeting you again. And this has been Larry Slagle with another political profile.